Hi everyone, I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and your marketing mastermind at TotalGenius.net and I help entrepreneurs just like you start or help make their business more profit generating, ba building their business based on the greatest strengths, talents and life experience. And today I have a very popular subject because this subject is something that troubles almost all of my clients and it troubles almost all entrepreneurs at some point or another. So today we're actually going to talk about your pricing and your income and how all of that is related to you attracting clients that you're meant to serve, having a steady stream of clients and how it affects your actual positioning not only in your own mind but also on the outside which actually is a related thing so if you get any value from this at the end I would appreciate it if you would just share this with your best business friends because this one thing I believe is why pe many people are struggling to make what you need every month so if you are one of these people, which I'm hoping that you're not, but I just want to, I want to say this up front. Some people start a business, uh, like they, they actually go and they intentionally start a business and they think that the amount that they make every month without like coming together with a plan, they think that the amount that they make every month is the amount that they have to make. So what they end up doing is that they decide they have something to sell. They, they personally decide how much um, they want to charge for it and how much they think other people will pay for it. And most likely, because this is what happens to most people, is that they end up undercharging. And then they, they don't have a plan of how much they actually need to make. So they end up not making what they actually need to make and then they have to go get a job or they end up quitting their business because they think that then they can't afford to have a business. I always talk about a business model and I think, I was just thinking today that this one term may fly over the heads of some people. And if you have questions, please post them in the feed and I'll answer them in my group um, or after this uh, video. So uh, a business model is actually what people put together. It's like a business plan. So if you were like a brick and mortar business, most likely you would go to the bank and get a loan and they would make you put together a business plan. They would make you show a budget not only how much you would need to spend to build that business but how much you think you can make by selling what you sell how many of those you need to sell and how that business will grow over time well you as an entrepreneur even though you know you may think oh it's just my laptop and I just operate this business from there you actually need that same type of plan it doesn't have to be a book it can be a, a scratch of paper, but you actually need to set goals and then you need to understand how to price things and then how many you need to sell in order to make the amount. I call it your magic number. No, it's not a million dollars a month. It's your magic number is the amount that you actually need to make to pay your bills and then a slight padding. And why I help, I, I, I suggest to people that they have a magic number is that most people think you know I want to make five figures I want to make uh, six figures I want to make a million dollars and they they have no plan they set this high goal because uh, some some people teach this they set a high goal like I'm gonna make five hundred thousand dollars this month and then you're nowhere close to that. You don't even have anything to sell that would bring you that and you end up not making it and then you lose your confidence. And so a business plan fits into a business model. So if you don't have one, that's okay. And you've been in business a couple years, but you're not making the amount that you want. That's okay. 
never too late. I would suggest you do that uh, at the end of, of this um, at the end of this video. Then you know the other side of it is is that then when you go, let's say you have a a, a plan for your business. So the other side of it is, is that you you put a price on whatever it is that you sell and it's based on your emotions so this is a very bad thing because I always tell people you know your money story is not someone else's money story and if you are a, a highly capable talented you have life experience working in what you do it doesn't matter if you had a business before you know, there's always a first time for everybody, but you have experience in what you do. You're a health coach, you're a business coach, you, whatever, uh, you, you sell clothing, whatever it is, you're good at what you do and you've been paid for it before. So when you go and you start your business, this is what I see many people doing is that they're afraid that if they price it at what they really want to price it at, that they won't attract people. And everybody, you know, you think you want quantity. That's actually wrong thinking. Because if you are just trying to help everybody and trying to dumb down your prices, there's something called congruency. And if you are a highly capable person, you probably speak with intelligence. You probably... Uh, you, to uh, to somebody who doesn't get you, you may you, they won't get you because you'll be speaking like another language to them. And then when they they see your pricing, so let's just say somebody goes, oh well, this would help me, and then they see your pricing. So you look like this amazing uh, business person who they think could help them, and they're like, oh, I'm sure I can't afford this. And then they see your pricing is like two dollars. And they're like, that, that looks kind of scammy. I used this, uh, this example, I use this example a lot. So if I, if I present to you a Tesla and a Ford Escort, and I say, somebody accidentally called me. <laughs> this Tesla is, is $100, and so is this Ford Escort. Which one do you want? Now, oh, and I'm sorry, and I don't tell you it's a Tesla, but I, I have a, a car, I have a car that's $100 and a, two cars that are $100. But you see the Tesla and you think that it's an amazing car, but you see the price, it's $100. Chances are you're going to be like, this is like a scam. And this is what happens when people see a pricing that's incongruent with who you are. In addition, people keep calling me. I have to turn on my airplane mode. Um, uh, Fear-based pricing will cause you to then not understand your marketing, not understand who it is you sell to, and instead of standing out as the high value you are, you actually will blend in and actually get drowned out by the people who are the loudest voices. Your goal in your business, this is going to seem very weird if, if you struggle with pricing, but your goal is not to be the lowest priced person because, in fact, people that, that understand quality, so if you are a high value person with, with ex expertise, knowledge, and a good heart, high quality people can recognize high quality and if you are trying to dumb down your prices what you are actually doing is dumbing down your value and a high quality person will block you out this is a very difficult thing because I know you know if you go into uh, what I see many entrepreneurs doing, going into like a desperation mode or, you know, I need to get clients. So you lower your prices, you lower your prices, you lower your prices. There are multiple th bad things that happen. Number one, you end up really not feeling good about yourself. And it may be an unconscious thing, but at the end of the night, you're like, wow, 
I'm like charging $2 and I used to make six figures. What is wrong with me? So you end up beating yourself up in your head. Then you wake up the next day and you have to like brag boldly is what I tell people. That's your positioning. You have to say, I'm really great. So you just spent the night beating yourself up in your head. You have to get up in the morning and say, I'm awesome. Yet there you are with your $2. And do you know who wins in that scenario? The person who actually may be charging $2, who has the louder voice than you because you're competing on price and you as a high quality person can't compete on price. So I used to be the marketing director on Rodeo Drive. Do you think that any of that stuff there was cheap? <laughs> People would go in there and drop like $50,000 and that was one person with one purchase. If, so that actually happened to a, a store on, on this event that we had. It was La Perla. They sell precious pearls. Had they priced those pearls at uh, 10 cents and that was their pricing model, and they sat on Rodeo Drive, I guarantee you people would be like, what, what is that? Because then they walk into another store and Tiffany's and you know, there's this uh, $30,000 ring and they're like, well, you know, I'm a high quality person, I'm high status. There's a reason why high quality exists. So I'm one of those people. I, 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 I shop and I buy cheap things too, don't worry. But, but when I see quality, I recognize quality. It's better made. It's, uh, it's more intelligent. I see, because those are the clients I work with. They have skills and they have knowledge. And you hold yourself a different way. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with other people. But when you are that then you actually need to price yourself at that so that you will attract that. Because when I see incongruency or, I, or people don't speak my language, despite how low the price is, I block them out. I don't even see them. And that's a problem if you're trying to make the amount that you need. So we already discussed that you have a business model you need to sell X amount in order to, uh, in order to, pay, to make your magic number. So that means that you have something that, that you feel can sell for a higher value. And, you know, it's a very tricky thing. But as I, if, you, if you watched my video yesterday, I talked about the difference between a problem and an urgent problem. People make decisions not based on, on like your pricing, on, on the actual structure of the program. In fact, many of my clients that have hired me have never even read my signature program page. You know why that is? We make decisions from our emotional brain. So this means that in actuality, your pricing has very little to do with people. If you solve the right urgent problem and you understand how to market it and, and who to market it to, your pricing, if, if the problem is urgent enough, so I'm not talking like, you know, my leg is bleeding. I, I'll tell you, like for me, my urgent problem is I help people build a business who are who have t years of expertise, who want to help other people, and who want to make use of all their years of learning, suffering, going through the challenges that they've, they've been through. They see that... They, they have this chance and this opportunity. And to my clients, that's an urgent problem. They probably had, you know, maybe they've had like a parent die or they just know deep inside that they have, a, they want to do something good with their life. That's an urgent problem when you can't actually get paid your worth. 
But to somebody else who just wants a business and, you know, wants, wants to automate everything and, you know, leave it on the table and just not, not worry about it, that's not an urgent problem. See, see the difference? It's two totally different things. But price, I didn't mention price in either of those things. So what you price your program, you really, this, is, this comes down to your price should be based on not only the urgency of the problem, so what it's worth to the other person depending on the urgency, number one. Number two, this is going to surprise you, but it's, so it's based on your own personal perception of your value. So, you know, what makes you valuable? To me, what makes me valuable? I spent 28 years of my life studying business, marketing, coming up with innovative ideas, getting awards, like uh, breaking rules, and even in my corporate life, and being ostracized, suffering with a personal health condition that caused me to learn about neurology. Like, that's my, my own personal value. So in your life, where have you put in time, effort, suffering? What makes you feel valuable every night when you go to bed and you say, wow, I made it through the day? What, you know, maybe your family, like they find you valuable. If you couldn't make money and you ended up beating yourself in your head and then you couldn't show up for them, doesn't that make you more valuable? And then the third thing that your pricing should be based on are your values. What are your values? You know, my, my dad was a college professor and then the head of the civil engineering department for Texas A&M. And my parents, you know, they, they were, uh, they're from China, immigrants, and they totally believed in working hard, earning a living, uh, not wasting, um, giving to others before they gave to themselves, and then valuing the value of, of money and helping others and how all of that was tied in together. So when I look at my business and I look at my pricing model, I'm not, I'm never going to be charging like sky high numbers. I see people like, yeah, there's, there's a couple coaches that charge like $100,000 or, or even like $20,000. I couldn't do that because that's a lot of money for somebody who could, be, you know, put a down payment on a house or send their child to college or, you know, I personally, I, I just could not, I couldn't do that because to me, money is, money is energy. And so I charge a reasonable amount that feels, not only feels good to me, but I know it, it may be a slight stretch for people, but money, this is what you really have to understand is money is an energy. And uh, this is not a woo-woo concept. Money is an actual energy. And when you attract clients, that's also an energy. When they pay that amount of money, it brings not only a higher quality, but a higher commitment. And because you are a high quality person, if you attract a high quality client who is committed then they will get, they will do the things that you say. So this is super important because if you have, I mean, and I'm not saying anything bad about these people, but if you have a client that, that pays you money but is not a quality client and doesn't do the things that you say because they're not committed, then, then you have a bad client. Because in the end, they're going to walk away and go, wow, I just wasted all this money. You know, I didn't get any results. And they're going to blame you. And then you're going to have a bad reputation. And then, you know, it's just bad. And that's bad energy. So it's so important that you understand that money is an energy. 
And with your high value, your high values and your expertise and the urgency of the problem, all those things combined, you need to charge the amount that is the value of the program and the value that you are. And you need to understand how it needs to pay your bills and reach your magic number every month. Because if you don't have a business model that does that, you're going to be struggling. And I always hear people say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll earn my way up to that. I'll earn my way up to that. Well, in the meantime, your bills are going unpaid. You want to quit your business. You lose confidence. Your mind is the only thing keeping you small if you're not making the amount that you want. And that sounds really weird, but, you know, I had a client make, make $10,000 with a Word document because she owned it. And that's, that's not a normal situation, but she knew she want, this is what she wanted. She was willing to work for it. She put herself out there. She did everything I said. And that's what happens. Do I recommend you start with a Word document? No. But what I'm saying is that you don't need bells and whistles. You don't need the five million uh, things that, that everybody's teaching you to do. You know, when you understand your value and you understand that you need to deliver value, you can make money. <laughs> as long as you're an honest person and you're, you're out there to help other people, I've seen people make money without a website. I've seen people make money without an email list. I've seen people make money solely by Facebook. I've seen people make money without Facebook. It's, it's all up to you. I, I, I had a client today and she was asking me, you know, well, what, should I do this? Should I, should I add a podcast? Should I add this? That's not, you don't need to do any of those things to make the amount of money that you want to make. And so this is understanding your own positioning, your own value and values. People will buy not only the problem that you solve, but what they really buy. And so this needs to be the basis of your marketing are your value and your values. When you can show people who you really are and you have a real factual business that solves a problem. So if you're confused about the problem, the urgent problem, watch my video from yesterday. But when you have a real business, then you can go to town in your marketing and just show who you are and the right people will hear you. You solve a problem, they will pay money for it. That's the way business works. And that's why, you know, when I see people struggling with overlearning and feeling like they have to hang out in groups and what you, what you really are doing is, number one, distracting yourself from really getting to the root of the problem because it just feels better to be accepted by a group. That's just being human. It's not you. That's just being human. Number two, you are, you don't even realize it, but you're losing confidence because what, what you're doing by hanging out in, in masses of people is that we unconsciously as humans pick up uh, what we're around. So in some cases that may be good, but it also in some cases that may be uh, bad because you lose your strong opinion, which is the thing people hire. Those are your value and values. And then when you go and you try to speak it out loud, you feel stupid. Trust me, I know. You feel stupid because you don't fit in. But that's the point. You don't want to fit in. Because the people that need to hear you need for you to stand out, being you. You know, we're human. And every time you shut down the voice inside of you, the one telling you, yes, you need to do this, the one that wakes up and says, I'm ready, I'm going to... And then, and then you get on Facebook and you're like, well, <laughs> you know, and, and you find yourself like looking at the likes. What you don't understand is that when you can just speak your mind and n the first time you do that, it, it, you're gonna, it's going to be like crickets. 
maybe the second time too. And you're going to have to keep speaking your mind over and over and over again until people will start to hear you. But if you start to speak your mind on a consistent basis, so it's this slight edge philosophy, the book that I was talking about yesterday, that if you keep doing those things that are true and real and purposeful, 100% of the time, you will get results. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be next week. But if you keep doing the work and the right things, and I'm not saying doing what everyone else is doing, doing what is true to you, you 100% of the time will get to the goal that you have. That's a big promise, but you know, that's why people believe in God. That's why people believe in the universe. Because I personally, you know, I would say I'm not so woo woo. I'm not necessarily religious either. But I believe we're all here for a reason. And when people talk about your purpose, I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to do a video about your purpose tomorrow. But it's not what you think it is. You know, your real job in life is to become the person you're meant to be. It's not about being like some savior or some, you know, standing on the top of the mountain. Your real job in life is just to become the person you're meant to be, to become what all of those challenges and failures and, and lessons and expertise and all of that, all of that that you've gone through, however old you are, was meant to share with somebody else so that you can help them. And with a business... People pay money for that. You get paid for being who you are. And to me, you know, that's a worthy goal. That's a life worth living. And that's, to me, what your purpose is. And when you can understand that you are meant to make money, you don't have to be a millionaire to be rich. And um, you don't have to do things necessarily that are that that are um, that take away your value actually you don't have to do things ever that take away your value but you do have to challenge yourself every day to step up to your highest self because unconscious mediocrity is how most people live they just go through life thinking that that's the life that they have and challenging that means that, uh, as my mentor says, told me, when you push yourself harder, or it feels better to push yourself harder than it does to let yourself down. And, you know, I just woke up, (laughs) I feel, like last year, I'm 49, so, you know, it took me, well, maybe I woke up when I was 47, but um, to realize that I was living an unconscious, mediocre life that every time I would have a challenge, I would give into it and just think that, you know, wow, what's wrong with me? You know, and I succeeded. I, I won awards in my, in my uh, work and um, I, I've been successful. But my daily truth was living in this unconscious mediocrity. And now I realize, you know, wow, um, I have many things that happened because I was living in this mediocrity and not taking control or responsibility for my own life. And in your business, you know, it's, it's the same thing. You have to take responsibility and understand that it's easy to make money. Money is everywhere. But I'm sorry, it's simple to make money. But it's not easy. Because you're going to have to um, stand out, feel different, uh, not maybe not be liked for a little bit until you're loved by the people you're meant to serve who want to pay you money so that you can make the amount that you need. So anyway, if you just joined, I really want you to go back and listen to the beginning where I talk about the business model because I really think that that's, that's really where it all starts. Um, and if you have any questions, please post it in the feed and I'll answer later. And, you know, um, I hope that that's helped you understand how you need to stand in your value and walk in it every single day. 
Because until you can walk in your value, hold your head up, attract respect, you're going to constantly be looking to others to validate you. That's not you. That's just being human. That's what I call mediocrity. And so validate yourself from the beginning every single day. And it's a daily challenge. Understand that. <laughs> you literally, it's not looking in the mirror and saying, I'm beautiful. Do the things that I teach you, the active focus meditation, all of the, you know, don't find out who you are and remember who you are before you get on Facebook. Okay? And then build your business model, price things correctly, and let's make some money. Right? All right. If you got any value from this, I'd appreciate if you could share this with your best business friends. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow. Bye, guys.